Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about quadrilaterals. Let me try again. Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about quadril. Wow. Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's talk about quadrilaterals. What is a quadrilateral? Well, quad means four, and lateral means sides. So that means a figure that has four sides. Now here's an example of what a quadrilateral could look like. There's no symmetry anywhere, just any different kind of angles. As long as it has four sides and four angles, we call it a quadrilateral. But we have very special types of quadrilateral. We have five of them, so let's talk about it. The first one is called a trapezoid. So a trapezoid is also a quadrilateral. It has four sides and four angles, but two sides are parallel. So here's an example where the top and the bottom side these two are parallel to one another, the other two are not, so this is called the trapezoid. A parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. So in this example, notice that the top side and the bottom side are parallel to one another. Also notice that they are equal in length, and that the two sides over here are parallel to one another, and also they are equal length. In order to have a parallelogram, the two sides that are parallel to one another here must be equal in length, and the two sides over here that are parallel to one another must also be equal to one another in length. Otherwise, you cannot have a parallelogram. A rhombus is an equilateral parallelogram. That's quite a tongue twister, isn't it? That means that it's a parallelogram where the two the top and the bottom side are parallel to one another, and the left and the right side are parallel to one another, but also that the sides must be equal in length. Equi means equal, lateral means side, so all four sides must also be equal in length. That's not the case of a parallelogram, but it is the case when we deal with what we call a rhombus. A way to think about a rhombus is to take what we call a square and kind of push on one corner and make it look like this. So if we take a square and we push it on one side and it bends over like this, we now have what we call a rhombus. So all four sides are the same, but it requires that all four are equal in length, but that these two sides are parallel and those two sides are parallel to one another, just like it is for a parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram but with a special condition that now all the angles are right angles. Notice that two angles of a parallelogram are obtuse and two angles are acute. Now when we go to a rectangle, that's no longer the case. All four corners or all four angles are equal to one another. They're all 90 degrees, therefore they're all called right angles. And finally, the most restrictive, what we call quadrilateral, is called a square. It is a rectangle. Again, when we deal with a rectangle, we know that all four angles must be right angles or 90 degrees. We know that the top and the bottom side must be parallel to one another, just like it is for a parallelogram. And the left and the right side must be parallel to one another, just like for a parallelogram, but the angles must be right angles. And the final restriction is that not only do you have this condition, you also must make sure that all the sides are equal in side or equal in length, just like it is for a rhombus. A square must have all four sides the same and all four angles the same. So the difference between a square and a rhombus is that the sides are the same, that's the same, but here all the angles are right angles and here all the angles are not right angles. That makes this a rhombus and that makes this a square. So now you know the naming convention for quadrilaterals and this very five very, very specific quadrilaterals that we'll, de that we'll be dealing with a lot in geometry. Now we know what they are, how to identify them, and how to name them. And that makes it a lot easier to do geometry.